Okay, picking up where we left off last time, I'm in the skip-v1.racket starter file, and we're partway through designing this function skip1, and we kind of got to a place where we want to know is right here, we want to know the position of first of the current LOX in the original list that we started out with at the beginning of the recursion. And that is context information, how far we've gone through, that's lost from, by the structural recursion template. So what we've got to do is use an accumulator to recover that. This is a classic context-preserving accumulator problem. What the accumulator designer recipe says is it says first you do signature, purpose, stub, examples. We've done all that. And then you template according to the structural recursion. We did that in the last video and we did a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to delete this because it represents some work we did, but I'm going to back up to just the template. Now the next thing that the accumulator design recipe wants us to do is to wrap this function in an outer function with a local and a trampoline. We'll give the outer function the same name, but we'll give the parameter a slightly different name. That's going to turn out to be convenient later. And we wrap this in a local, and there's a trampoline that just calls the inner function with the outer parameter. Command I fixes the indentation. There we go. That's the second step of templating. Templating these functions is a three-part process. The third step of templating is I'm going to add a new parameter for the accumulator here. Now later on you can give this parameter a more meaningful name, but for now I'm just going to call it ACC for accumulator. And then I'm going to go through and everywhere where there was a set of dots, I'll add ACC after the dots. I'm basically treating it as atomic data. And I'll put it here. And what I also have to do is everywhere where there's a call to the inner function, I have to put a note saying, hey, it takes two arguments now. We need to give it another argument. And what I'll put there is just dot, 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 ACC. And you know, you might put first of LOX here or not. I'll just do it this way. And here I'll just put dot, dot, dot. So now I've set up to have this extra accumulator parameter. And I'm going to do one more thing which is I want to set myself up to do the type and what's called the invariant of this accumulator, which is kind of going to be like its signature and purpose. So I want to say ACC colon, and now I'm done with the templating. Before we go on, I want to highlight the three-part process that we used to generate this template and, and show you that you can actually still see that in the total code. What I'm doing here is to underline the part of the template that comes from the structural recursion template, the part of the template that comes from recursion on list of x. I'm highlighting that here in blue. And here's the part of the template that represents wrapping the structural recursion template in an outer function, a local, and a trampoline. I'm highlighting that in green. And here's the part of the template that represents adding an additional parameter, the accumulator parameter, and adding the corresponding operand to supply a value for that parameter each place it needs to be. And I'm highlighting that in red. And what I want you to start trying to do when you look at this template is to see it as those three separate facets. Rather than a mix of a whole bunch of characters, see it as composed of these three parts and that's going to make it easier for you to work with this recipe. And now I have to figure out what is it I want this parameter to represent. What piece of information is this going to represent? Well, we knew this before. What we knew was if we were really lucky, if this parameter could actually be the position of first LOX in the original LOX zero, then this function here would have I'd have been done. Just rename that to ACC. So let's try to make the ACC be that. Let's have it represent the position of the current first item in the list in the original list. Well, a good type of data for representing that is a natural. So let's go here and say natural. 
and we'll say that it's position of first LOX in LOX0, and it's the one-based position. Now you see why I renamed the outer parameter LOX0. I did it because it makes it easy to write this comment. I can now talk about first of LOX in LOX0. That's the only reason we named that parameter was so that we could say both the current LOX and the original LOX0 in one sentence. Okay, so that's kind of a signature and purpose for the parameter ACC. Let me now do some examples. The way I do the examples is I work out the progression of the calls to the inner function. So let's say we start out with list ABC, and what's the second argument? What's the accumulator argument got to be? I'll just put dot there for now. And I'll work out this progression. I'll just do some editing here before we think about it. Well, let's see, we're wanting the accumulator to be the one base position of first LOX and LOX0. So at the very beginning of marching down a list ABC, this ought to be one. And when we get to the next item, it ought to be two and three and so on. This is a pretty simple case of what the accumulator progression has to be. You might even feel like you could skip these examples. I'd encourage you not to until you get quite comfortable with accumulators. So now, I'm ready to code the details. I had already coded the details before. They're down here at the bottom, but let's pretend I hadn't. Let's see. If the list is empty, then we produce empty. The accumulator doesn't come into play at all. Otherwise, what's the question we wanted to ask? We wanted to know, is the current position odd? Now it's really easy to ask that question. We just say, is the accumulator odd? If it is, keep the first element of the list in the natural recursion. Otherwise, just have the natural recursion. But now I gotta figure out what happens in this call here. What happens there? Well, each time the accumulator grows by one. So that just becomes add one of ACC, and that becomes add one of ACC. And this needs to be the initial value of the accumulator. Well, the initial value of the accumulator starts out at 1. Let's try it. That works. So what you've seen here is a context-preserving accumulator. The structural recursion template loses information about how many recursive calls there have been. It loses information about how far in the list we've gone. I can use an accumulator to preserve that, you saw the three-step templating process. And the one more point I want to make to you is when you're filling in the details, there's always three things you need to do with the accumulator. You need to provide an initial value or initialize it. That's right here, the one. You need to exploit the value of the accumulator. In other words, take advantage of the fact that this comment here that says what the accumulator represents is right. And that's where we said odd question mark of ACC. We're taking advantage of the fact that the accumulator is what we need it to be. You need to preserve this fact we've said about the accumulator. You need to make sure that in each recursive call, it's still the one base position. So in these two recursive calls to skip one, you need to add one to the accumulator to make sure it stays correct. Sometimes we call this comment here the accumulator invariant. An invariant is just a word that means even though the value changes, because it changes as we go along, there's something about it which doesn't change. And that is that it's always the position of first LOX in LOX0. And that's why we use this word invariant to describe it, because it's a varying quantity about which some fact does not change, does not vary. So there you go. That's a context-preserving accumulator. What you should do now is do at least one of the example problems for context-preserving accumulators before you come back to talk about the next kind of accumulator.